얼마 전 엔비디아의 CEO 젠슨 황은 이렇게 말했습니다. 생성형 인공지능을 기반으로 미래의 모든 컴퓨팅은 실시간 생성될 것입니다. 엔비디아가 개척한 가속 컴퓨팅을 바탕으로 미래의 모든 컴퓨팅이 생성형으로 전환되고 있습니다. 산업혁명 시대 공장에는 물이 투입돼 전기를 생산했지만 생성형 AI로 인한 제2의 산업혁명에서는 데이터가 투입돼 토큰을 생산하게 된다면서 엔비디아는 AI 공장을 구축하는 기업이라고 밝혔습니다. 과거 데이터 센터는 비용으로 간주됐지만 AI 공장이 된 데이터 센터는 돈을 벌어들인다며 AI가 새로운 산업혁명 시대를 이끌고 있다고 강조했습니다. AI 가속기 설계를 넘어 소프트웨어 플랫폼 기업으로 진화하는 것이 첫 단계라며 그는 단기적으로는 AI 생성 데이터 센터 사업이 큰 기회가 되겠지만 한발더 나아가면 AI 모델을 생산용으로 최적화하는 작업이 필요하다며 엔비디아의 소프트웨어 사업도 무시할 수 없이 커질 것이라고 내다봤습니다. 엔비디아는 로봇 플랫폼 브루트를 공개하며 AI의 다음 시장으로 로봇 공학을 제시했습니다. 젠슨 황의 시선은 로봇 너머를 향해 있다고 합니다. 바로 양자 컴퓨팅 기술입니다. 엔비디아는 양자 컴퓨터를 직접 개발하진 않지만 이미 세계 최대 양자 컴퓨팅 회사라며 양자 컴퓨터 시대의 도래를 대비하고 있다고 강조했습니다. 젠슨 황이 말하는 생성형 AI와 어려운 상황을 대처하는 방법 함께 시청하도록 하겠습니다. 알파 컨덕터 채널 구독과 좋아요 알림 설정하시면 최신 영상을 가장 빠르게 시청하실 수 있습니다. Um, but you've had to steer the company through some very challenging times. Like when it lost 80% of its market cap amid the financial crisis because Wall Street didn't believe in your bet on ML. Um, in times like these, how do you steer the company and keep the employees motivated at the task at hand? Uh, it's, this is the, my reaction during that time is the same reaction I had about this week. Uh, earlier today, you asked me about this week. My pulse was exactly the same. This week is no different than last week or the week before that. Um, I, and so the opposite of that, you know, when you drop 80%, um, it, don't get me wrong. When, when your share price drops 80%, it's a little embarrassing, okay? And, and um, you just wanna, you just wanna wear a t-shirt that says, wasn't my fault. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but even more than that, you just, you just don't want to, you don't, you don't want to get out of your bed, you don't want to leave the house. Um, all of that is true. All of that is true. Um, but then you go back to, go back to just doing your job. Uh, I woke up at the same time, uh, prioritized my day in the same way. Uh, I go back to what do I believe? Uh, you got to gut check, always gut check back to the core. You know, what do you believe? Uh, what are the most important things? Uh, and uh, just check them off. You know, sometimes, sometimes it's helpful to, you know, family loves me, okay, check. Uh, you know, double check, you know, right? And so you just gotta check it off. And, and you go back to your core, um, and then go back to work. And, yeah. and then every conversation is go back to the core. Uh, keep the company focused back on the core. Do you believe in it? Did something change? The stock price changed, but did something else change? Did physics change? Did gravity change? Did, did all of the things that, that, that we assumed, uh, that we believed, that led to our decision, did any of those things change? Because if those ch things change, you gotta change everything. But if none of those things change, you change nothing, you keep on going. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you do it. <laughs> I do wanna now address the topic that is on everybody's mind, AI. Last week, you said that generative AI and accelerated computing have hit the tipping point. So as this technology becomes more mainstream, what are the applications that you personally are most excited about? Well, you have to go back to first principles and ask yourself, what is generative AI? What happened? Um, what happened was we, have a, we now have the ability to have software that can understand something. They, they can understand uh, why, you know, what is, first of all, we digitized everything. That was, you know, like for example, gene sequencing, you digitize genes. But what does it mean? That sequence of genes, what does it mean? Uh, we've digitized amino acids, um, but what does it mean? Uh, and so we now have the ability, uh, we digi digitize words, we digitize sounds, 
Uh, we digitized uh, images and videos. We digitized a lot of things. But what does it mean? We now have the ability to, through um, a lot of studying, a lot of da data and from the patterns and relationships, we, we now understand what they mean. Not only do we understand what they mean, we, we can translate between them because we learned about the meaning of these things in the same world. We didn't learn about them separately. So we, we learned about speech and, and words and, and uh, paragraphs and vocabulary in the same context. And so we found correlations between them and they're all you know, registered, if you will, registered to each other. And so now we, uh, not only do we understand uh, the modality, the meaning of each modality, we can understand how to translate between them. And so uh, for obvious things, you could caption video to text, that's captioning, uh, text to uh, images, mid-journey, uh, text to text, chat GPT, amazing things. And so, so we, now, we now know that uh, we understand meaning and we can translate. Uh, the translation of something is generation of information and, and, um, I, and all of a sudden you, you have to take, your, you take a step back and ask yourself, um, uh, what is the implication in every single layer of everything that we do? And so I'm exercising in front of you, I'm reasoning in front of you, uh, the same thing I did a quarter, uh, 15 years ago, when I first saw um, uh, AlexNet, uh, some 13, 14 years ago, I guess, um, uh, how I reasoned through it. Uh, what did I see? How interesting? What can it do? Very cool. But then most importantly, what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean to every single layer of computing? Because you know, we're in the world of computing. And so what it means is that, that the way that we um, process information fundamentally will be different in the future. That's what NVIDIA builds, you know, chips and systems. The way we write software will be fundamentally different in the future. The type of software we'll be able to write, write in the future will be different, to new applications. And then also, also, the processing of those applications will be different. What was historically a retrieval-based model where uh, inf uh, information was pre-recorded, pre if you will, almost. You know, we wrote the text, pre-recorded, and we retrieved it based on uh, some recommender system algorithm. In the future, uh, some seed of information will be, will be uh, the starting point. We call them prompts, you, as you guys know. And then we generate the rest of it. And so the future of computing will be highly generated. Well, let me give you an example of what's happening. For example, uh, we're having a conversation right now. Very little of the information I'm, trans I'm conveying to you is retrieved. Most of it is generated. It's called intelligence. And so in the future, we're gonna have a lot more generative. Our computers will, will perform in that way. It's gonna be highly generative instead of highly retrieval based. Then you go back and you're gonna ask yourself, you know, now for, for you know, entrepreneurs, you've got to ask yourself, uh, what industries will be disrupted, therefore? Will we think about networking the same way? Will we think about storage the same way? Will we think about, would we be as abusive of internet traffic as we are today? Probably not. Notice we're having a conversation right now, and I don't have to get in my car every, every question. So we don't have to be a, as abusive of, of transformation, information transporting as we used to. Um, uh, what's going to be more? What's going to be less? Uh, what kind of applications? You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you can go through the entire industrial spread and ask yourself what's going to get disrupted, what's going to get big different, what's going to get nude, you know, so on and so forth. And, and that reasoning starts from what is happening? What is generative AI? Fo foundationally, what is happening? Go back to first principles with all things. Jensen Huang의 바람대로, 과연 NVIDIA는 AI 공장을 구축하는 기업이 될지 로봇 공학과 양자 컴퓨팅이 어떤 방식으로 실현될지 투자자로서 꾸준히 관심 가지면서 엔비디아의 성장을 지켜보면 될것 같습니다. 더불어 젠슨 황이 인터뷰 중 근원적인 질문으로 돌아가서 생각해보는 것이 중요하다라고 언급한 것이 인상적이었는데요. 시장과 사업을 살펴보고 분석할 때 이것이 어떤 의미를 갖는가 라는 근원적 질문으로 돌아가서 생각해보는 것도 기업의 전망과 실적을 추정해보는데 도움될 것이라고 생각합니다. 4월부터 주식시장은 난이도가 높고 어려워지고 있지만 알파 멤버십 분들은 꽤큰 수익을 유지하고 있습니다. 모두 알파 멤버십에도 많은 관심 부탁드리고요 다음 시간에 더 유익한 내용으로 찾아뵙겠습니다 금융시장 초과수익지휘자 알파컨덕터였습니다